Burka Historic um, Servant Institution Showcase. We will begin shortly. Uh, as a reminder, uh, please remember to have your microphone off. And also, please feel free, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to send the questions uh, through our chat box. You can send it directly to Q&A um, Jackson Cruz, and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. So um, as I mentioned, we actually uh, would like to thank you for taking this uh, time on your schedule. Uh, we know this is after hours and we will um, give our best for you to have uh, this a pleasant time. So I would like to um, begin our presentation. Okay, as I was mentioning, this is our Hispanic Serving Institutions Showcase. Um, and we'll be sharing some information with you, um, explaining actually before uh, we go into the topic, we would like to explain you um, how Education USA uh, can actually assist you on pursuing your uh, dream of studying abroad and uh, what are histo uh, historic Hispanic serving institutions and how they are a great option um, for you to study in the United States. So um, first and for the most, it is important for you to know that Education USA is your official source of US higher education um, and we are a U.S. State Department network um, that we promote U.S. higher education. And um, also, we help students throughout the application process by offering um, accurate, comprehensive, and current information about many universities around the United States. Okay. It's important to note that uh, there are around more or less 400 um, Education USA advising centers worldwide. And if you have any questions regarding how to start your application process to the United States, you can definitely go ahead and contact your nearest Education USA advising center. Okay. Um, also, it's important for you to know that um, all of our services are for free. And we also would like to take uh, the time right now that you know more about what we do and how we can help you. It's important for us to clear up some frequently asked questions that we as Education USA advisors um, have on a daily basis. So, the very first common question that we have is, does Education USA have scholarships? And um, well, for this one, uh, we're not actually a financial aid program, but we're an advising program, which means that unfortunately, we don't have um, any um, financial resources to actually uh, fund your studies in the United States. However, we can definitely go ahead and guide you through um, looking out for options of, of financial aid and also explain you how scholarships work, okay? But unfortunately, we are not a scholarship um, program, okay? Um, another common question that we have is that, are there any opportunities to improve my English? For this one, I will say actually yes and no. Because um, in the sense, there are many universities that actually do offer intensive English programs that will help you out to immerse yourself in the English language, okay? However, if you're looking like for an academic program, like a bachelor degree, a master's or a PhD, uh, you will actually need to be ready to speak English because um, all of the lectures, homeworks, presentations will be in English and you should be um, already having an advanced level for you to take this courses, okay? Um, also, it's important to know that um, you will need to have um, an English proficiency test taken for um, this type of courses. Now, um, some of the other questions that we receive um, is that if we can help you out to find a short-term study program or an internship abroad. So for this one, um, we as Education USA, we actually focus on services and programs that are actually offered by US universities and colleges. Um, we focus on the intensive English programs, associate degrees, 
also the bachelor's, um, the graduate and undergraduate uh, programs, okay? So it's important to recognize that the internship abroad, you know, because when you, you study in the United States, uh, there's, as an international student, you do have a, a, a legal way, you know, um, you, you can legally go ahead and extend your visa um, with the OPT, which will allow you to work uh, for one year after you graduate, okay? But only after your graduation. Um, and last but not least is um, uh, as the as an Education USA advisors, we are frequently asked if we have any type of partnerships with any a specific um, university or colleges. And the, the answer is actually no, we do not have any a specific agreement with any university. However, we do work with um, the more than 4,000 universities that are around the United States. So um, in that way, we can help you out to find out the university that better fits you, okay? Now that you know um, what is Education USA, um, that we have seen some of our frequently asked questions, I would like you to guide you through all, all of our services, okay? Um, because applying to U.S. institutions, uh, it might be sometimes tricky. It's a long time. It's a long procedure, long process sometimes, and it can get complicated if you don't have the accurate um, guidance. So that's our um, that's her mean in here. So um, as Education USA, we do have five steps that we have divided the application process to. So first step will be to research your options, okay? So there, it is important for you to actually find a college or university that best fits you, okay? You shouldn't try to match yourself like directly to, that, to the school, but, uh, it is important for you to actually know how um, the institution that you're looking is actually a, a, a fit for your long-term goals. So there are some questions that you should be asking yourself when researching your options. Um, the first one we can tell, why do you want to study in the United States? It's um, also important to ask yourself, will I need financial aid? Um, where do you want to live in, in the United States and also which type of institutions you would like to apply to. Um, our service number two will be how you will finance your study. You should start your uh, financial plan ASAP, okay? Because of planning early will give you the opportunity to research the best in a best way which institutions will actually uh, provide you financial assistance and which um, institution will be able to um, to to guide you okay through the, the the right way on your um on your application and also on your finding the uh, financial aid it's important to know that financial aid um you can have a 20 percent 80 percent or in the best of the cases you can get a 100 percent um of a scholarship, okay, but it is highly competitive and applications for financial aid and um, the admission will actually go hand by hand. Now, um, as the number three service that we provide you is to complete your application, okay? Uh, by this, uh, we refer to covers all the requirements that U.S. institutions will actually ask you to uh, comply during the process, okay? It's important to know that this process, the, the application process is actually a task that will require a lot of your time and concentration because you will need to have um, checking on recommendations, you'll be writing essays, you'll be um, studying for standardized tests, taking your standardized tests. So uh, it's important for you to know that you will need to uh, plan ahead, not only your financial plan, but also um, you will need to follow a plan so you are able to finish the application process on um, the time that the university will require you to send all the, um, the paperwork. Now, um, after you have been uh, admitted to the university and financial aid has been granted, it's important uh, for you to know that you will need to apply for your U.S. visa. This um, actually takes place after you have been accepted into the university 
And as Education USA, we can definitely go ahead and guide you throughout the application process for your visa. We can check on your documentation. We can prepare yourself um, for the um, visa interview. However, we cannot guarantee that there will be a visa granted because that's a decision that's actually made uh, by each country's uh, consulate. Okay, now last but not least, our step number five or service number five will be help you to prepare for departure. And here it's important to, um, it's where you're actually verifying uh, it's the final step and you're going through uh, making your travel arrangements, attending a pre-departure orientation that is mostly um, organized by any of the Education USA advising centers that you can find um, worldwide. Also, um, you will need to check on um, requirements you need to comply before entering the United States. So um, that's mostly what we are, what we do as Education USA. And now moving to our main topic, okay, I would like to briefly um, like mention to you what are Hispanic serving institutions? So for the record, it's important to know that um, we celebrate the Hispanic Heritage uh, Month. Uh, it's actually taking place from September the 15th through October the 15th. Um, and it's basically as a recognition uh, to celebrate the many contributions, the diverse and extensive histories the American Latino community um, gives to the United States. So. It celebrates, uh, its celebration actually dates back um, from 1968, which was originally a one week celebration. However, in the year 1988, under the president's Reagan's term, it was um, then uh, extended to a month celebration. So since then, during this celebration, um, it has been celebration uh, celebrated nationwide throughout festivals, art shows, conferences, community gatherings, and much more. So this month, or, or the reason why it's called, um, or is celebrated during this month, it's because it celebrates also the independence days of um, many of, of our Central American countries, which is um, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua, which uh, we all celebrate our Independence Day on September the 15th. So now you might be asking yourself, um, then what is a Hispanic serving institution? So a Hispanic serving institution is defined as an institution of higher education that is eligible and that 25% of their enrollment is actually um, undergraduate students that are Hispanic. As a fact, uh, it's important to mention that there are 451 Hispanic serving institutions around the United States and also Puerto Rico. Another interesting fact is that international students can experience uh, that diverse um, by attending an Hispanic serving institution. And there's it is not mandatory that you need to be Hispanic to attend one of these institutions. So uh, we do have some special guests today and we would like to hear from them. Uh, there are Hispanic serving institutions and it's important for us to let you know which are the benefits and opportunities for Hispanic students uh, that would like to apply to the United States. So our presenters and our first presenter today will be uh, the Hillsborough Community College and we have Lisa Guadalupe with us who is the manager in international student recruitment from Hillsborough Community College. Lisa, this is your space right now. Hola a todos. I'm going to do this presentation in Spanglish. And yes, I am the recruiter for Hillsborough Community College. I'm also the alumni. Let me see how do I share this one moment. OK. OK. Can we see my screen? Yes, we can. OK, perfect. OK, so Hillsborough Community College, 
Um, we are in Tampa, Florida. Um, so in the cent we're in central Florida. Um, Orlando's over here, Miami's over here. Um, we offer over 160 associate's degrees, four certificates, over 47,000 programs. Um, we have five campuses and all five campuses, um, you know, since we are a Hispanic serving institution, we always have somebody that speaks Spanish. So, siempre vas a tener una persona que hable español. Um, tenemos más de 350 estudiantes inter internacional con más de representando más de 80 países. Um, we are the top 10 safest metro area in the United States. Nosotros ofrecemos eh, apartamentos de lujos al frente del college, específicamente del Del Mabry campus, y también tenemos cinco equipos de deportes. Um, como en Tampa, hay muchas cosas, eh, you know, apart from your academics, um, location. So a lot of things that we do offer is we have different sports venues. Um, al frente del campus de Del Mabry tenemos el estadio de los Bucaneros y al lado tenemos el estadio de los Yankees. So si quieres ir para un juego, tienes eso. También estamos cerca del aeropuerto, como quien dice, está en nuestro patio. Tenemos la playa 15 minutos, estamos cerca de Orlando, casi una hora y media, y también Miami, cuatro horas y, y media. So, ¿Por qué eliges un colegio comunitario? Lo primero sería eh, el lower tuition, so el costo. No, nosotros no somos, eh, nosotros nos requerimos eh, like essays or GPAs. We want to make sure that your experience here is what you take away, um, so we don't have harsh um, requirements. Um, we also don't have um, large class sizes, so our cap is um, 25 students. We also have the 2 plus 2 program and then the OPT program. Um, so this is the cost of what it would be um, for two semesters at HEC, and that's what we consider um, an academic year um, compared to your first um, two years and then your last two years, let's say if we compare with UF, you'd be spending or saving about $35,000 um, coming to a community college. We also have, nosotros tenemos un acuerdo um, con los eh, 12 universidades públicas en la Florida que cuando uno termina su asociado en arte eh, se puede transferir a cualquier universidad en la Florida, eh, la 12. Um, si no son la 12 pública, todavía se puede transferir um, y eso se puede hacer con una asesora académica que ella te puedes hacer un plan um, de todos los cursos y los prerequisitos que necesitas. También tenemos a, a conditional letter of admittance um, con USF, um, esa es la escuela más cercana de, de nosotras, eh, que dice cuando está admitida a HCC, entonces ya tiene you are admitted into USF. So eso es algo que uno puede llevar al consulado diciendo, hey, listen, I'm, in, I'm at USF, I'm at HEC and I'm at USF as well. So esto es un video del plan que como te estaba diciendo, eh, esto enseña cada semestre. Si, si uno lo ve, tenemos fall, spring, summer, y eso se puede cambiar. Si decides que quieres hacer engineering, lo puedes cambiar aquí. Um, so ofrecemos el asociado en arte. Eso es para eh, transferirse a la universidad. Tenemos el asociado en ciencia, los programas especiales, especializados como nursing. Ya cuando terminas eso, puedes comenzar a trabajar y también ofrecemos el, los certificados. Si no quieres demorar dos a cuatro años, entonces lo puedes hacer en uno a dos semestres. 
ofrecemos el programa de honores um, que tiene muchas ventajas como becas, eh, tiene small class sizes o si tú crees que 25 estudiantes es mucho, entonces ellos lo tienen a 15 estudiantes. También ofrecen como field trips and culture activities. Um, so creo que esto es una buena ventaja de si no quieres estar como You'll still get the community college feel, but it'll feel kind of like private school because you have that centered um, feeling. You have that one professor for 15 students. So aquí son unos estudiantes que estudiaron en el Honors Institute y se transfirieron a Boston College, Cornell, Stetson, University of Florida, you name it. So, te puedo leer todo lo que necesita para el, el programa de los honores, pero lo más importante es la última, que uno eh, para ingresar en este programa necesita un 3.6 GPA ya cuando termina el primer semestre. Y si quieres ver su Instagram y todas las actividades, ahí está la información. Eso es del OPT Program. Um, so es como una pasantía. Cuando uno termina su asociada en arte, um, puedes hacer un año, eh, puedes trabajar por un año y ya cuando ingresa en el, para hacer su bachelor's degree, lo puedes hacer otra vez. So esta es la ventaja de hacer community college. Tiene la oportunidad de hacer OPT dos veces y después cuando continúa lo puedes hacer otra vez en master's. So, como los apartamentos de lujo que estaba hablando, tenemos a Hawks Landing, está al frente de nosotros también. Eh, siempre le digo a los estudiantes, esto de las cuatro habitaciones es más económico y tiene la oportunidad de conocer a otro estudiante. Eh, tienes todo, las camas, el wifi, eh, eh, tiene su habitación propia con su baño. Eh, tiene un gimnasio, un computer lab, tiene residence assistance, piscina y también tiene eh, los um, security guards de HEC que están ahí 24 horas. So, ¿Qué necesitas para aplicar para HEC? Bueno, aquí tengo todo. Necesitas su high school transcript. Um, necesita su evidence of English language proficiency. Nosotros no tenemos un uh, ESL program, pero sí tenemos escuelas alrededor que cuando terminas el English proficiency, entonces puede ya ingresar a HEC. Um, veo que muchos estudiantes ellos toman el TOEFL, el IELTS o Duolingo, es bien popular. Necesita su um, copia de su pasaporte, eh, financial support. Um, normalmente son 50 dólares, pero como están en esta sesión, tú puedes poner Education USA en la aplicación y entonces nosotros eh, sería gratis. Cualquier cosa, aquí está mi información y si quieres más información sobre HEC, puedes poner esto en su teléfono y entonces yo te mandaré más información. Gracias a todos. Thank you very much, Lisa, for your presentation. So, um, guys, we hope you were actually taking out notes for this. And we will now move on to our second presenter from tonight. And that will be uh, Mercy College. And we have uh, Sonia Bruch with us. And she's the Associate Director of International Admissions from Mercy College. Sonia, welcome. Okay, so I don't see Sonia here. So um, let's move on uh, for our next speaker that will be um, Marty Bennett. And it's the Director of Global Recruitment and Partnerships for Marty Bennett.
Sharon, is it for UNLV? I just want to confirm because Marty's not here. Okay, so let's move on uh, to um, the University of Delaware Law School. We move on with Brenda Simorelli. She's the recruiting and admissions coordinator from Whitener University. Okay. So let's move on. I think they're having sometimes um, connection with um, issue connections with their Zoom. So let's move on now uh, to Sanjin Ju from Chasta College and he's the Dean Emeritus and International Education from Chasta College. Hi. Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Great, great. Okay, so let me put into this. Uh, start it. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank Sharon and uh, also Jackson and Education USA for organizing these events. Uh, I would also like to thank all the students and their parents for attending this uh, 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 presentation. So. Uh, my name is John Yu. Uh, I'm the emeritus, as Sharon mentioned, uh, from Shasta College. Uh, I have been uh, a professor and administrator in the uh, California Community College system for about 26 years. So today we are talking about Shasta College. And Shasta College uh, is a leader in uh, higher education in California. So we won the uh, Innovation Award from the state uh, three times uh, over the last few years for a program that help our students, uh, including our Hispanic students, uh, succeed. The, uh, so where uh, is uh, Shasta College? Right? So Shasta College is uh, located in the Northern California. So here is a map of uh, California, as you can see. The, uh, we are located in a city called Reading. Now, Reading uh, has about uh, 90,000 people. The, uh, Reading uh, has about uh, 90,000 people, the, uh, which is about uh, 220 miles uh, north of San Francisco. You can see here San Francisco. And it's about 160 miles uh, north of Sacramento, uh, which is our uh, state uh, capital. So uh, the area is uh, known for its natural beauty. I'm sorry, this keep on going back. Okay, so uh, uh, this uh, area is known for its natural beauty. So Mountain Shasta, uh, here's Mountain Shasta, and Shasta Lake, which is the largest uh, man-made lake in uh, Northern California and also Larson uh, Volcanic National Park, they are all nearby. Uh, Sacramento River also uh, go through the, uh, the Reading. And uh, also the uh, transportation is very convenient because Reading is located on I-5. Oh, some of you, you know, uh, California, you know, I-5, which is a major highway uh, on the east west coast of the United States, is run from uh, Mexico all the way to Canada. So Reading is located on uh, I-5. And there's also a small airport at Reading, which have daily flight to San Francisco, to uh, uh, LA, and uh, also to uh, uh, Las Vegas and Seattle. So transportation is very convenient. And the area is very safe, very beautiful. So now let's talk about uh, our college. So Shasta College is a comprehensive two-year college created by the Western Association of School and College. So which stand for the, uh, uh, that's, that's what stand for. Uh, so this is the same organization that uh, accredited all the UC uh, uh, campuses and also California State University. Now, what we mean by comprehensive, we mean that we offer almost all the major uh, disciplines uh, that, that you want to study, right? So we have engineering, business, uh, uh, fine arts, uh, computer science, almost everything, right? uh, which are 
we are an important part of the California higher education system, as I mentioned, well, with the over 70 years of excellence. So we just started, it was founded in 1940, uh, founded in 1949. So we offer over uh, 124 transfer degree and certificate programs and uh, over 12,000 students uh, on a very large campus. The campus is uh, uh, 337 acres. Just uh, for your information, the main campus of, of Harvard is 229. So we have a very large campus. So what are some of the advantage of attending Shas College? I know that you have 4,000 college universities in the United States to choose. And there are more than uh, 1,000, I think it's more than 1,100 community college. So why you should go to Shasta College, right? So number one is that we have very strong academic programs, including the two plus two with UC, CSU, and other university. Uh, UC stands for University of California, CSU is the California State University and other universities. So each year, uh, our graduate transfer to over uh, 100 college and university across the United States, that's including UC Berkeley and UCLA. Uh, the other advantage of attending Shasta College is tuition and fee. So uh, we have a low tuition and fee. So the uh, also low cost of living in comparison to San Francisco Bay Area and Los Angeles. I know a lot of you want to come to the California to study, right? I mean, the San Francisco Bay Area and the Los Angeles area can be uh, uh, I mean, as far as the housing and the living expense, expenses, they are pretty expensive. Well, in our area, it's probably only like a one third or one fourth of the uh, cost of living of that uh, San Francisco. The, uh, you can also live in our dorm on campus, like a four year institution. Now, very few community college have a dorm on campus and Shasta College actually is one of the 11 community colleges out of the 115 California community colleges, right? So in California, we have 115 community colleges, but only 11 of them have a dorm, and Shasta College is one of them. And so when you live in a, in a dorm, you just live like a four-year like like four institution, right? Uh, also, as I mentioned, the area, our area is a very, very safe. Uh, we provide a very safe, and the security environment in a small American city. And we have a great campus uh, safety department. So your parents don't have to worry about where you're uh, in the United States, where you're studying just college. The other advantage include small class size and also easy access to professors. So on average, well, our class is probably like 20 or 30 students. Well, if you go to some of the major universities, uh, the introduction level classes, you, you probably talk about 200 or 300 uh, uh, students, which is very uh, difficult for students to uh, access uh, to the professors. Uh, we also have outstanding the uh, support. The, we have free tutoring in English, uh, ESL, math, business, science, and, and many other areas. So, uh, uh, also, for example, if you take a calculus class and if you have difficulties and you have issues and you can go to the tutoring center to find help. The, uh, as I said, our area is a very, very beautiful. It's a nature lover's dream. So Mountain Shasta, Shasta Lake, Sacramento River, Burning Fall, Larson Volcanic National Park, and uh, many trails that are all nearby. So if you like outdoors, and this will be a perfect place. Now here's the estimate uh, annual cost to attend Shasta College. The uh, tuition fee is about uh, 8,184, uh, which is about uh, one fifth of the University of California. And so uh, compared with some of the four year institutions, the tuition fee is very low. And book and supplies about a thousand dollars. Again, this is the estimate. Uh, room and the board is about nine thousand nine hundred sixty. Uh, health and accidental insurance is probably like thirteen hundred sixty dollars. And personal need is uh, uh, about thirteen hundred. So overall, 
the uh, total cost of attendance for a year at the Shasta College is about 21,800. So this number, if you uh, show us that you have this amount of financial resources, we should be able to issue you uh, uh, the I-20. So in order for us, after you have been admitted and you need to show us that you have 21,800 financial support before we can issue I-20. So keep in mind, if you uh, want to attend like a U University of California and this number probably should be at least 65,000. So, so we are only like about a third uh, of uh, the total cost of attendance of that uh, University of California. The uh, scholarships. So Shasta College uh, offer three types of scholarship and financial aid. Uh, the first one is the Shasta College Foundation Scholarship for International Students. And this is a $3,000 uh, for uh, outstanding income uh, international student. And the student should have 3.5 GPA, uh, should uh, write a uh, uh, essay about why you want to attend Shasta College and how Shasta College can help uh, your education. And you also need two letters of recommendation. Uh, the other type of scholarships for students who are already enrolled in Shasta College. So if you are uh, enrolled in Shasta College for one semester, you will complete 12 units with a GPA of 2.0, you can apply for other scholarships scholarships. There are about 70 of them. Uh, so and of course, then you can work on campus, right? So international students uh, are allowed to work on campus for about 20 hours maximum uh, a week. So in California, the minimum wage is $15. So what that mean is for each week, you can earn up to about $300. And that's mean about $1,200 uh, a month, uh, which is quite a bit. You can actually Use that uh, amount of resource, you can actually support your uh, education uh, at Shasta College, right? So here, uh, also I want to show some pictures. Uh, so there are many activity on the campus. You can see here, these are the graduation. There are students have a good time there. Uh, students have poster sessions. There's uh, culture activities, and we have student uh, little kids based on our campus. All students just get uh, uh, together, have some fun. And then we have sport, arts, music, and theaters on campus. You can see there's the uh, uh, American uh, football, right? And we have theater, uh, we have uh, orchestra, and you can go, as I said, and if you love outdoor, and this is a perfect place as well. And you can go uh, ride a bike. And here's the uh, Shasta Lake, which is the uh, uh, largest lake, uh, as I said, in uh, the Northern California. And you can also go camping. So here are the contact information for Shasta College. Uh, Sandy Silva, who's our international admission specialist and who's in charge of admission. So if you're submit your application and she will be the person to help you uh, in the uh, admission process. And Ryan Laffrey, uh, who is our uh, global education coordinator will support you when you get to Shasta College, right? You're trying to, for the student life, you know, participate in campus activities or trying to find a place uh, to live, right? Or have any issues. We also have uh, counselors as well. And of course, I'm John Yu. Uh, I'm here to uh, help you. If you have any questions, uh, I'll be happy uh, to answer them. Uh, as I said, uh, I have been uh, a faculty member and uh, administrator in the California Community College for over 26 years. I'll be happy to answer any of your questions about Shasta College or higher education in California. You want to go to California State University or University of California. Uh, I'll be happy uh, to answer your question. So thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation, John. Um, so we do have um, more presenters coming ahead. So we were missing some presenters. So we will uh, finish with the upcoming presenters and then we will go back uh, to the presenters that um, rejoined this session. So 
Moving uh, forward, we have now Jing Jing Li uh, from, from University of Central Arkansas and, and as the International Recruitment Specialist. So this is your space, Jing Jing. Thank you, Sharon. Let me share my screen. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our university, University of Central Arkansas. Uh, uh, when we uh, start conversation with the students, some students don't know where Arkansas is. So we always like to show this little map about um, mm, to show that where Arkansas is, you can see Arkansas is in the central part of the United States. It's we are surrounded by Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, some Mississippi, Tennessee, and Missouri. Uh, our university is located in the center part of the states. Um, we are a comprehensive regional university. We have uh, uh, more than 10,000 students and with uh, 400 international students, they are coming from uh, 80 different countries. Um, we offer more than uh, 150 degree programs uh, with uh, 85, more than 85 undergraduate undergraduate degrees and 50 graduate and graduate certificates programs. Uh, the city of Conway, where our university is located, is ranked as the, the, the second least expensive city in which to attend college in the United States. And also we have uh, three colleges in Conway. That's why we were called the uh, college town. In fact, some uh, families, they move here just for their uh, children to go to school here. And we are very traditional American town. Um, so our university was founded in 1907 at the Arkansas State Normal University. Uh, this is our campus. You can see it's very beautiful. Uh, BuzzFeed actually, you know, said you see it has the most beautiful university campus uh, in Arkansas. There uh, are more evidence of that. Uh, this is our old main building. Uh, it has hosted speeches by two U.S. Uh, former presidents, uh, uh, Gerald Ford and the Arkansas native uh, Bill Clinton. Um, um, for uh, compared to some larger universities, uh, we have a low student to faculty ratio. Uh, with our classes, class sizes is small. Um, students to faculty ratio is sixteen to one. Um, we uh, there will be more interaction between you and the professor. Um, so students um, use this opportunity to interact with the faculty members. Um, we have uh, five colleges on campus, arts, humanities, and social science, uh, college of business, college of education, and the college of health and behavioral sciences, and college of natural sciences and mathematics. Here are some uh, um, programs uh, in each uh, college. You can also find it on our website. So I'm not going to read all of them for you, but feel free to contact me after uh, the presentation or just go to our website to uh, check it out. Um, humanities, social sciences, this is from that college and the college of education degrees from a college of natural science and mathematics. I want to uh, point out that we were uh, we were being asked like we offer physics engineering and then we found out it's robotics. So students in that program they just make robotics. Mm. These uh, degrees 
for from College for Business. Our College of Business is accredited by AECSB. Uh, in fact, only eight percent of uh, college business in the world is accredited by AECSB, which means we have a great college business program. Uh, these are the programs from College of uh, Health and Behavioral Sciences. Um, these are the top programs for international students. We found out, you know, there's a certain pattern for some programs our international students like to major in, such as business administration, computer science, finance, economics, accounting, biology, uh, nursing, psychology, exercise, sports science, marketing management, music, cybersecurity, film, physical therapy, and data analytics, computer information systems, and analytics. Um, we also have an uh, intensive English program. If you don't meet our admission uh, English proficiency, you can start with the intensive English program. Uh, there are six levels from beginner to advanced, and each level is six weeks. Um, because it's six weeks, which means middle semester entry is possible. And when you finish the IEP program, you don't have to take TOEFL to, um, in order to take the regular academic classes. Um, the teachers there, they are experienced, they are qualified, they have been teaching for a long time, and they have um, great experience uh, interaction with international students. They provide all kinds of activities for students to engage on campus and with other uh, local uh, students. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, in Conway, the cost of uh, living is low. Um, so to our university, the cost of attendance is also low. You can see compared to other universities, uh, our total cost for 2013 to 2000, uh, 2023, sorry, 2023 to 2024 is twenty-two thousand one hundred fifty dollars. Uh, this in, uh, include an institution, international admin fee, health insurance. Uh, your room and meals. We also uh, estimate your cost there. Uh, you can see we don't uh, charge out situation for international students uh, because as long as you live on campus, uh, you get the institution as everyone else. Uh, not only the cost of attendance is low, we also offer scholarships. We have upstate tuition scholarship. We, we mentioned that as long as you live in uh, university housing, you automatically, automatically get the scholarship. We also have international marriage scholarship and global citizenship scholarship. These scholarships are um, offered by our office uh, the Center for Global Learning and Engagement. There are also um, uh, other departments on campus. They have scholarships. So their scholarships uh, uh, are also open for international students to apply. Mm. The uh, requirements for the scholarships you can also find on their website, on, on, I mean, on our website. Mm. The uh, uh, admission requirements, uh, we also don't have a harsh requirements as long as you finish your high school. Actually, before you finish your high school, you can apply, but uh, when we admit you, we would ask you for your high school transcripts. And uh, as long as you have a 2.5 GPA and uh, you give us your financial documents to show that you have the ability to pay for the first year cost of attendance, uh, we don't require English proficiency. So if you don't have the English proficiency, you can just start from IEP intensive English program. If you do meet the requirements, you can take regular academic classes right away. So when you apply to other universities as well, I would remind you, you don't want to miss their deadlines. Uh, now I was going to talk about our students' life. 
this is our mascot, Bruce the Bear. Uh, have uh, more than uh, three, close to 4,000 students live uh, in our 18 residency halls. Uh, I actually just found out like that our residence halls, they have tutor there, uh, so on the first floor, so students, they don't need to um, uh, walk through across the campus to get help on their academic classes. They can just stay in their dorm and get help. Um, so we are now actually celebrating the uh, uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. We have all kinds of activities going on on campus. The uh, Latino uh, Students Organization, they play a huge role in this celebration. Uh, we want to promote the Latin American cultural and the Hispa Hispanic and the La Latino heritage. Um, you see football is division one and we play in the Eastern Conference now. Uh, you can see we have more than women's sports than men's sports. Although we are not close to beach, we even have a beach uh, volleyball for women's group. Uh, the, our hyper, hyper center has all kinds of exercise equipment and we offer uh, free group exercise classes for students. There's a swimming pool. Uh, students can um, do exercise, stay fit uh, outside of their academic courses. Uh, we also have a, a nature reserve on campus. Um, this is our library. You can uh, work on group projects, check out movies or books, and uh, use the free tutoring center there. We also have an uh, education abroad office. Um, you know, Arkansas is known as the natural state, which means it offers many places for you to hike, bicycle, camp, kayak, or swim if you like outdoor activities. Mm. We have uh, uh, more than 200 registered student organizations. Um, students play, uh, uni American students, they not only they study hard, they also play hard. Here is just a short video I want to show you about our university. At UCA, you can go big. Go far. Go loud. Proud. Bold. Fast. Forward. Beyond. Go here, the University of Central Arkansas. UCA goes where other universities don't. UCA invests in speakers first. UCA builds opportunities best. Our graduates are prepared to go anywhere, everywhere. So when you thought big plans, fearless ambitions, outrageous dreams, UCA says, let's go. At UCA. Um, so to sum it up, I think our university have, uh, you know, three points can um, stand out. First is uh, the, um, the cost of attendance, so affordable. We want to make it affordable to everyone and uh, uh, we treat every student the same, no matter where your background is, where you come from, as long as you uh, live on campus housing, you get the institute institution uh, um, and uh, we have uh, um, diversity students life so when you come here you will not only get the American education you want you can also experience the diversity student life here if you have any questions feel free to contact me anytime you can also scan the QR code if you want to to fill out the information so I will be able to contact you thank you very much Thank you very much for your participation, Jingjing. Now, moving uh, to our next presenter, we have um, the Western New Mexico University, and we have today with us um, Magdaleno Manzanares, who is the Vice President of External Affairs from the university. Thank you. Um, and I am in my car, just in case you're wondering, and I'm coming from precisely the uh, conference of the Hispanic Association of Colleges and Universities. And for the students who are, and the parents who are uh, watching and listening, uh, Western New Mexico University was founded in 1893. 
And we were one of the 18 universities that created the, the Hispanic Association of Colleges and Universities. So we are very versed on what uh, HSIs, as they are known, Hispanic Serving Institutions, provide to the students, and we continue to work on that. Um, I, I invite you to, to check our webpage, and I don't know whether, I don't have the slides that I have prepared for you because I am on the road. Um, and so, but let me just tell you what we offer. Uh, through our president, the Rector de la Universidad, um, we can offer scholarships to students, um, international students. To begin with, we offer about 50% reduction in tuition. In other words, if somebody from Honduras, El Salvador, Costa Rica, uh, Nicaragua, uh, were to apply and be admitted at our university, there is a good chance, a high likelihood that that student will receive at the very least 50%, a scholarship of 50% reduction in tuition. And let me just get it off my chest. Uh, what we charge the, the students from the state of New Mexico where we are located, we, we charge them $14,286 per year. Uh, and uh, but I'm sorry, those are for the students who are not from New Mexico, uh, who are international students. The students from New Mexico pay only $6,096 per year. And that is exactly what we do in this office, making sure that our international students pay the same tuition as the students from New Mexico. So there is a reduction of 50% plus in tuition. Uh, Western New Mexico University is located in Silver City, New Mexico, which uh, for you to get an idea is in between El Paso, Texas and Tucson, Arizona. And, but we are not in the desert. We are in the mountains near uh, what's called the Gila Wilderness. That was the first uh, wilderness uh, protected area of forest that was created in the United States. So we have a long history of, of uh, preserving nature, of doing outdoor stuff. And we combined those studies with 70 other programs that we have, both from certificate programs, um, you know, technical programs and bachelors, uh, in some of our countries, we call it uh, licenciaturas uh, and maestrias. Now, we have been doing online teaching since 2005. In fact, half of our students are online students. And so we have programs, for example, in other countries with uh, universities that we partnered with where they, we offer what is a, a dual degree. So a student spends four years both in their university, let's say in Nicaragua, and they, they come to Western. And in four years that I able to get two degrees from both universities, because we have agreements uh, and we talk with the different uh, faculty members, the different, uh, uh, people in charge of academics in those institutions. So we uh, synchronize the courses that they have to take. So at the end of four years, they, they get the diploma from us and also from their home university. That's one of the programs that we work on. We have, <coughs> aside from, I'm sorry, uh, aside from the scholarship that I mentioned uh, of the bat, 50% of tuition, we also have some other scholarships that through our Office of uh, International Coordination, uh, we, we uh, make sure that students have additional uh, scholarships. Uh, some are small, some not too small, but all of them in the aggregate um, help the students. Uh, we have a foundation at the university that has many 
uh, scholarships that international students are eligible. Um, I, I would invite you to uh, get in touch with us. Um, I don't know if uh, at some point uh, you may have some questions, but uh, Education USA certainly has our information because I don't have it handy with me right now that you can consult with them and you can get that information uh, from them and we will be glad to, to answer any questions or, or concerns that you may have. And I just mentioned El Paso, Texas and Tucson, Arizona. In El Paso, Texas, you have a Research One University, a, a very important university in the US and that is a Hispanic serving institution. In Tucson, Arizona, you have one of the top public universities in the nation. And it's also a Hispanic serving institution. So you have from Shasta College, for example, in Shasta, California, uh, a community college, but also you have uh, the likes of the University of Arizona in Tucson. And in fact, the three universities in Arizona are Hispanic serving institutions. And so, and in New Mexico, we have about five universities and about 10 community colleges. They are all Hispanic serving institutions. Why? Ah, because New Mexico was founded in 1580 and over 40% of the population in the state of New Mexico is of Hispanic origin. So we, have, we are well embedded in all this uh, action uh, to, uh, or actions to offer opportunities to Hispanic students, regardless of whether they are from New Mexico, they are from Texas, from Arkansas, New York, or from Nicaragua, or from Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, Costa Rica, Colombia. And so, um, I will not uh, engage in more conversations about uh, at this point, uh, but uh, you know the information you can get, get it from Education USA very easily. I'm sure they will be very helpful as they had been in the past uh, with us uh, in different parts of uh, in, in different parts of the world, and indeed from Zambia to Mexico. So. Uh, that's all I have. Um, I can give you my cell phone number. Uh, I give it to everyone. So my phone number, my cellular phone number is 602-402-1219. Nuevamente les voy a dar mi, mi número telefónico de teléfono celular. Es el 602-402. 1219. Y me llamo Magdaleno Manzanares. Soy el vicerrector para asuntos exteriores y de asuntos intergubernamentales de la Universidad Western New Mexico University. Y tengo una gran experiencia de, como maestro, uh, 25 años uh, enseñando ciencias políticas y nueve años como vicerrector de la universidad. Y estamos para servirles en español, en inglés, como ustedes gusten. Y este, pues gracias por escucharnos. Thank you very much, Magdalena. We really appreciate you sharing all the information um, from the Western New Mexico University. Um, now we move on to our next presenter that will be um, from the Georgia State University. We have Peace Lee with us. So, peace, this is um, your space. Great, thank you so very much. Actually, I was just inspired by all the all the speakers who could speak um, Spanish. I wish I could do that too, but I promise you, I will share my presentation tonight uh, in Spanish. Uh, we are hiring a Spanish speaker for our admission counselor. Um, my name is Peace Lee. Uh, I'm the Associate Director for International Admissions at Georgia State University. So let me go ahead and share my screen so you know where we are located. Can you all see my screen? Mm -hmm. 
No, we, we can see your screen right now. You cannot see my screen yet? Okay. Let me try it again. There you go. Sounds good. Okay, let's get started. So Georgia State University is located in Atlanta, Georgia, which is the largest city in the southeast of the United States. Um, many of you want to give you a quick background about Georgia State and what is um, U.S. education system. So I just visited Canada about two weeks ago. Um, apologize for my throat tonight. My daughter plays tennis. So tonight she has her tournament and, uh, you know, Sometimes mom get a little, even though they don't let people to scream. So I let my voice heard and uh, I lost a little bit of voice coming back home. Um, she did really well. So I apologize if you hear my voice is not kind of clear, uh, but I try to speak slower. Um, United States has over 5,000 universities and colleges compared with, for, for example, our neighbor, Canada, they have about 200. And we have a very comprehensive systems offering all different public, private, comprehensive, arts colleges, community colleges, different levels. So what is Georgia State? Georgia State actually is a research university. Um, we offer undergraduate students research opportunity and we are known for our undergraduate student teaching. We have over 250 degree programs over 11 colleges and school. For example, if you wanna study business, you wanna study finance, we have three different tracks just in finance alone. We have 17 majors, finance has three. One is we um, offer finance major and we also offer a specific one in risk management and insurance and also we have international policy focused on economics and finance. So that gives the students a lot more space, interdisciplinary study, and helping the students, many of them coming to university are on no majors. They don't know what do you want to, what they want to start. So by offering a lot of different choices, we give the students the opportunity to explore, to develop, and then to focus on what they want to do. We are also very well known for providing students innovative opportunities that include in three different dimensions. Number one is solid undergraduate teaching. We do not let a lot of school letting TAs or some lect uh, lecturer at Georgia State, we committed to let all our um, professors and uh, a lot of times we are hiring um, what, what they call this, the certified lecturers uh, from different industry, for example, accounting. We do have certified CPA coming to teach uh, our computer science. We have Facebook um, engineers coming to teach our introductory classes as well. Um, we also, the second dimension is student support. The students will understand from day one, they come into Georgia State, what type of enrollment, what is the curriculum they are taking in order to graduate on time, to get to the practical experiences such as co-op intern for that major so that they can locate a job opportunity. We have students uh, graduate from our data sciences um, last May working for Amazon and starting at a four year undergraduate level over $120,000. And the next one is also our well-known one is our GPS system. We can locate a student if they are failing. International student requires to have a minimum 2.5. If they are failing a grade, a lot of times they will lose their I-20, then they lose their visa status and they have to be, um, you know, um, get on academic probation or even expelled from the school. We do not want that happen. So we develop our own GPS system to tracking students' success. For students who are coming here on a scholarship, they require to have a 3.0. So the GPS system helping us to track students' academic success as well. So we are number three in the most innovative in institution in the nation, um, tier up with Stanford University. 
Um, Bass University for first year experience, that is the students coming to campus, we are mingle the mean within our student network, within our local community, because our location, we're looking in downtown Atlanta, is very fast paced. If you like that kind of uh, urban setting, fast paced, and in the mix of everything, we have business, we have 28 different uh, headquarters among the Fortune 500 companies. Uh, we have over 30 uh, consul generals from different countries. We also have a mixed pot of different diversity. We have 17% of Asian on campus. We have over 40% African American. We also have 40% white. And then we have a mix of uh, um, uh, Hispanic community as well on campus. Um, I will show you some pictures of this uh, um, support, the lasso support on campus later. Um, this is the opportunity we're providing for the international students and the two our domestic students. We providing their um, study abroad. Students are not required, but they are encouraged to study abroad. We have scholarship ranking from $1,000 to $3,000 for them, encouraging them, support them to study in another country. Uh, we, through the 11 colleges and the school, we offer different opportunities for our students um, to be major in um, like do a different area, do a major, they can do a major and also do another minor. The goal is to helping students graduating and be able to find a practical experience so they can use their OPT and locate a job. For international students, a lot of times this is very critical. So if you are a sports player and you are looking for getting a sports scholarship, we are NCAA Division One. We have 16 different teams. Um, we also have, uh, um, uh, this picture shows is our football stadium. Um, we also have our own um, like swimming, um, what it, what they call, um, sm uh, swimming center, recreation center that providing students with all the other opportunities. If the students are top 10% of the freshman applicants, top 10%, we got about 30,000 uh, applications every year the top 10% of the applicant can get into our honors college. The honors college offers not only a guaranteed out-of-state tuition waiver, which is up to $20,000 a year, and also give the students additional 3,000 to 5,000 stipend. If a student is applying before November 15, the students will also be eligible to apply for the presidential scholarship. Now, a lot of students say, hey, downtown Atlanta is too big, it's too expensive for me, the tuition a little higher. I would like to start at a smaller campus with a smaller class setting and also a lower tuition. We also is one of the few universities in the, in the United States that offers a two-year pathway program. The two-year pathway program allow the students to start their program's first year or first two years at a community college level. That is very unique for Georgia State. Not only we have a two-year community, we have four-year bachelor degree, we have master, we have PhD. So students can start from year one at the lowest tuition at our community college base and all the way up to completing their PhD at one institution. So the community college campus, we have five different, as you can see, they are actually very close to each other. This is our downtown Atlanta. Around the Highway 285, those are our parameter, and the five campuses, each about 35 to 45 minutes from the downtown campus. So it's not in another city, it's just in another suburbs. So, um, we do not offer engineering program. This is one thing about Georgia State University. Um, if a student wanted to major in engineering, they can, however, start at our parameter college, which is a two-year program. After two-year pre-engineering program, they can transfer to other university within the system, such as Georgia Tech, uh, University of Georgia, uh, Kennesaw State, we also every year have student transfer to other like Arizona State, Purdue University. In the past, we have students 
apply and transfer successfully to MIT and Cornell University. Um, we do provide on-campus housing for our downtown Atlanta campus. We have different housing facilities um, that including um, private occupancy, two, three uh, shared bedrooms. This is other some pictures. Um, the cost for the on-campus housing is ranging from eight is ranging from eight hundred a month to about one thousand dollar a month, depending on the students wanted to choose private setting or they wanted to share with other students. Um, this is something is on campus. This is our food dining hall. Um, we have you heard about freshman twenty five? That means average freshman gains about twenty five pounds during their study first year. Uh, I want to share this is I just downloaded actually tonight um, a page from our university. Uh, we do have our student success uh, website, but in there you can see um, we do have um, the Hispanic month celebration. Those are the events, the highlights of the month almost uh, every week. And we have different activities hosted by the LASSO. The LASSO is a Latinx Student Services and Outreach, and they do have their own offices. Their main goal is to help the students increase academic, social, career, and leadership opportunities. That's what the LASSO specifically serves for our um, Hispanic students. So if you are interested, I can share their website with you, or you can simply Google just Google LASSO, L-A-S-S-O, at Georgia State University. They're providing a lot of more diversified services, activities, events, support. We have students even getting $3,000 to $5,000 scholarships from different foundations on campus as being the Hispanic students. So if you are interested in Georgia State University, here is how you're going to apply. One, you're gonna submit your application. We accept in two types of different application. One is common application. If you are a freshman, freshman means you are in high school or you have graduated from high school in the past four years, you wanna to apply to Georgia State, you can apply through common application. However, if you graduate more than one year and you are in college, Okay, the freshman means student graduate from high school has never attended university or college. If you already attended university or college, you cannot apply as a freshman. You have to apply as a transfer. Okay, if you apply for transfer, you use our own university customized application called Slate. What we need from you, we will need your transcript, either your high school transcript or your college transcript. Okay. And SCT or ACT due to COVID is optional for Georgia State University. However, if your grades is really low, below 3.0, our average admission standard last year average is 3.24, okay? If you have a lower than 3.0, we do expecting you providing some other formats of academic support to show your qualification. So we are requiring you to provide ICT or ACT as additional support. If you have a 3.4 above GPA, you do not need to provide additional documents, uh, such as, I mean, ad uh, additional um, exams such as ICT or ACT, okay? If you graduated from a non-English speaking um, institution or country, okay? If you graduate from an international school, that is American curriculum, instruction is all in English. You're providing your curriculum all in the US um, CPC. We do not require you to provide English proficiency. However, if you are from a government school, public school in your country that does not offer English as instructional tool, you are required to take English proficiency. We also need your transcript to be um, evaluated if you graduate from a university or you have attended university for more than a year, okay? So I will leave my contact information later so you can have more uh, questions, you can ask me directly. 
Also remember application deadline for any university in the United States, very important. Even though we have an application deadline, for example, priority for Honors College is November 15th. You do not want to wait until November 15th at 11.59 to submit your application. Do it as early as possible. For scholarship, always provide the document, submit your application as soon as you can, because the funding is always first come, first serve, okay? For international students, May 1st is our regular deadline. After May 1st, we will still have a case-by-case -case review, but the common application will be shut down, okay? However, if you're providing your application before May 1st, and you can wait maybe until July 1st to submit your final documentation. But your application has to be submitted by May 1st. Otherwise, the portal will be closed. Okay, for spring is November 1st, which is spring starts in first week of January. Okay, after the new year coming back, we will start the school the next week. So the November 1st is the spring application deadline. Now, tuition, a lot of students are very, very interested about how much they have to pay. Before scholarship, tuition for the four-year campus, Atlanta main campus, tuition and fees together is about 24,500, okay? For the perimeter college, do you see the difference? It's almost three times difference, right? This is without the scholarship. And also, of course, there's room and board, now, we offer a $8,000 to $16,000 um, scholarship for the Atlanta campus and $3,700 to $7,500 scholarship for the Perimeter College two year. Um, you can do the calculation. So basically after the scholarship, if you deduct, oops, hang on, let me go back to here. So the full year after you finish, the tuition gonna go down to about, 7,300 and plus the fees is about $9,500 a year, okay? So after your scholarship, your tuition and fees will be less than 10,000. So how you qualify for the scholarship? A lot of students say, yeah, yeah the scholarship sounds very tempting. We do have a very generous offering for our international students. Um, the requirement for the scholarship is 3.6 GPA. If you do not meet 3.6 GPA, you have to provide your SAT or ACT to build your index up. We use something called a freshman index. Um, that is a calculation with mix of GPA and freshman uh, SAT, ACT together to calculating a number. So if you have 3.6 GPA and then you feel you are qualified, you do not need to apply. We will automatically consider you. However, don't forget, the application deadline is March 1st, okay? So this is the end of my presentation. This is my email. And also you can follow us on our social media. And uh, if you have any questions, please do ask in the chat box uh, or at the end of the presentation. Thank you again for your time. Thank you very much, um, Peace, for your um, presentation. Moving forward to our next uh, presenter, we have from North Central College, we have Priya Shaw, who is the Associate Director for International Recruitment. Can, can everyone see my screen? Is it? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Um, let me share my video. So hi, everybody. Um, my name is Priya. Um, I'm gonna give you a um, virtual tour of North Central College and tell you a little bit about our location, our programs and majors, and some of the resources that we um, provide for students. So North Central College is a four-year university. Um, we're located in Naperville, Illinois. Um, and so we are right outside of Chicago, about 30 minutes outside. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about Naperville and our campus. Um, just real quick, this is our team. Um, if you are interested in applying to North Central, um, these would be, uh, this, uh, these are all the people that you would communicate the most. 
Um, and the, here's me. And then Annie Carnell is our um, international admissions specialist. Um, and she does a lot of counseling and um, helping students through the entire application process. But we are a nationally recognized institution. We were ranked um, America's best colleges by US News World and Report. Um, and also Naperville, where we're we are located, is um, was ranked the uh, number three um, best city to live in America, and it is also one of the safest cities as well. Um, and so a little bit about Naperville, like I said, it's one of the largest um, suburbs in the Chicagoland area. Um, we have about 148,000 residents, so we are a large um, suburb. There is a, um, a lot of great school districts here, so um, you have a good blend of, um, it's, you have our, uh, access to Chicago, um, we have the downtown Naperville uh, area that is right next to North Central's campus. So you have, you know, students have access to our, our small downtown that has a lot of restaurants and shops. And um, so there's things to do. And then there's also a large um, family oriented um, areas and neighborhoods around surrounding our campus as well. Um, we also have a really nice river walk where students can study and um, walk along a lot when the weather's nice. Um, and then um, we have a train station that is located right next to our campus. It's within walking distance. Um, and so students can um, easily access the train. Um, and, and depending on the time of day that you take that train, students can get there in 20 to 30 minutes. Um, one of the best benefits of this is that students who do internships in Chicago do not have to worry about transportation because they can easily take any number of trains um, especially during rush hour in the morning and in the evening. And so um, there's just a lot of access. Um, Chicago is the third largest city in the United States. Um, there are a lot of great internship and job opportunities with global companies, national and then small boutique firms, including many, many startups in um, a variety of industries. Um, and so we have a lot of partnerships with different um, companies in Chicago, and they come to our campus often for career fairs, um, and to do interviews. We also, um, Chicago is known for its architecture, um, its museums, its um, many um, great professional sports teams, and um, of course, our food. And North Central College is a community of leaders. Um, we have about 2,600 students, 134 international students um, that are represented from 42 countries. Um, and then we are a division three school and our athletic program is very strong. Um, and so we have 40 national team championships. So if you are interested in playing a sport, um, we have a variety of sports teams, both in men and women. Um, and so I'm happy to talk to anybody that's interested in that as well. 100% of our international students do receive um, competitive renewable merit scholarships. So um, one of the uh, things we talk about North Central the most is that it's a good fit for students that are looking for um, a small environment where, where um, there's a close-knit community. So um, our average class size is 20. We never exceed 35 students. Um, so the faculty student ratio is 14 to one. Your uh, professors will know you by your name on the very first day of classes. All classes are taught only by faculty. Um, we do have teaching assistants, but they only help with tutoring um, and different um, support in those ways. But faculty is always in the classroom um, and they are very accessible. And we have over 90 undergraduate programs. Um, and um, you can see the entire list here. Some of the programs that our um, North Central is most well known for is um, our actuarial science program. Um, this is a growing program at North Central and many of our graduates have gone on to join um, all sorts of different types of companies um, where they can use this skill set. Um, we also have a growing engineering program. Um, at this time, we offer electrical, um, mechanical, and computer engineering. Our sciences, um, our three most uh, top majors are 
uh, chemistry, biology, and neuroscience. Um, we have a lot of research opportunities that students, um, a lot of our international students do do with our professors on campus during the summer. And many of our um, professors um, in the sciences, especially biology and physics, do, um, do research and work at um, two uh, large labs in our area, the Argonne National Lab, which is one of the largest um, labs in the world, and then the Fermi, um, Fermi Labs that does a lot with um, physics and all sorts of different um, aspects. So there's a lot of um, opportunities for stu students who are interested in research. Um, we also have our School of Business and Entrepreneurship which is a very um, strong um, school and program where students have a lot of different um, opportunities within um, those majors. And then our psychology and sports management programs are well known too. Um, we also have the English Language Institute. Um, and this um, is a, it runs um, in five eight week terms throughout the school year. Um, we also offer conditional admission. So if there are students who um, are not able to um, get that required score for English proficiency to get um, direct admission into the undergraduate programs can opt for conditional admission. Typically students that come into this program will, depending on their level of English, um, they will do one to two semesters in our English Language Institute and then go on um, to their undergraduate studies. Um, it's a great program. Um, it really prepares um, students for academic English. And there's a lot of um, support that um, this program gives to all students on campus um, if they are, um, you know, English is um, a second language or there are just some uh, additional support needed with English. Um, the students that are in our English Language Institute, especially those who are, have conditional admission, can live on campus. They have access to all of our facilities. Um, and so they get the true university experience even before being in the undergraduate program. So they can join clubs, um, play sports, um, essentially do everything. Um, and then we also have a pathway program, which is in our English Language Institute. So um, if you are a, um, you know, you're taking the TOEFL or the IELTS, especially with the TOEFL and our required TOEFL is 79, but, you know, sometimes students are right on the edge of that score. So they may be getting a 72 to a 78. Um, we um, uh, have given the pathway um, program as an option. So basically students can do a mix of classes. So depending on um, where their um, English level lies and if they are stronger, let's say for example, a student has really strong listening skills and speaking skills, but they may need some more um, uh, support in academic writing and essays, then they can take one to two classes in the English Language Institute and then two classes in undergraduate. So it's you know, essentially what it says, it's giving the pathway option. Um, and then once they are able to uh, successfully um, finish those required English Language Institute courses, then they can move completely into the undergraduate courses. And there are a lot of different scholarship opportunities provided within this pathway program. Um, and so our international students are very involved on campus. Um, like I said, we have a small uh, community, so it really feels like home. Um, you know, most professors know their students well, so there's a lot of guidance given there. Um, so students have um, the option to choose more than 75 clubs to participate in, including the International Club, which is one of the largest clubs on campus. Um, we also have um, volunteering opportunities. All international students can find on-campus jobs. We also have an international living learning community, um, which is um, a growing program on campus um, and has become very popular. So um, right now we have about three floors and one residence where students, um, American and international, are living um, together and it's become a great global community. They also take specific classes together. Um, and so um, it's just a great, uh, program that has been building over the years. Um, and like I said before, there's a lot of undergraduate research opportunities and the uh, option to pay, play on competitive or intramural sports teams. Um, North Central offers a lot of um, in additional international student support. Um, so we have, um, you have individual guidance from your academic advisor, 
Um, they are very accessible. They meet regularly with students. They create a roadmap so students can graduate on time. In addition to that, we also have our International Student Services Advisor, um, and this person, she will reach out to students, um, make sure they are staying, you know, that they staying on their, like, on path, um, answer any additional questions if they are having issues with any faculty or have some problems in classes, um, they can always go to this advisor as well for that additional support and guidance. Um, our International Student Services Advisor also um, creates engagement opportunities, helps students to find jobs on campus, um, does CPT and OPT workshops uh, multiple times throughout the year, and helps students um, if they want through the driver's license process. Um, and our international students are launching careers. Over 90% of our international students are on OPT or employed upon graduating. Um, we have a great um, support from our Center for Career and Professional Development. And so they do help um, all students um, as, and they give um, um, support to students in the entire um, internship and job search process. Um, there's the portal handshake um, that many universities use. And so students can um, go on there, create a profile, and then our um, Center for Career Development will help students build out their resume, practice for interviews, and they hold um, host uh, numerous job fairs on campus. Um, and so again, that gives a lot, uh, students a lot of access to different companies. Um, and you will see a list here of these are just some of the employers that are um, our recent international student graduates have gone on to um, work for. And then we also have our first generation college student support. So this is one of our um, most well-known programs at North Central. Um, and so it is a um, program that supports first generation students um, and it connects our first generation, generation students to faculty and staff who um, are also first generation um, students within universities who have attended um, a four year college or university, they're the first in their family. Um, and so 40% of North Central students are first generation college students. Um, and just recently um, in this past year, we um, North Central was recognized um, and its Cardinal First program was named an example of excellencia um, in recognition of service to Latino students. Um, and so, um, you know, we are um, nationally recognized at this point. And I will say personally, it's, it's a really great program for first generation students and you see these students um, thrive in many, many different ways um, within their college experience. And our admissions process, um, so you can apply online, it's free. Um, we ask for official secondary school transcripts from three years of high school. We also ask for um, documentations of English proficiency, or you can select conditional admission in the application. Um, and then we ask for a, a letter of recommendation or a personal statement. Um, and then these are our scholarships. Our scholarships are all merit-based. Um, we do not have need-based scholarships. And the scholarships are determined um, once we um, review and evaluate um, students' transcripts. Um, and so the highest is a presidential scholarship. And so our scholarships range from 29,000 to 32,000. We also have an EL ELI to degree scholarship. So basically the tuition that students pay in the ELI that tuition is applied to their undergraduate tuition um, as scholarship over the four years. So um, technically that money is be coming back to you in the form of a scholarship to the rest of your tuition. Um, if you are a transfer student or you decide to transfer in the future, we also have transfer scholarships and those are also uh, merit-based. So all based on GPAs and they range from 27,000 to 30,000. And um, these are our English proficiency scores. Um, and we also have um, uh, the, if you are attending an IB high school, we do accept some IB um, classes for college credit as long as they are in the high level subjects. And we also, um, depending on courses that were taken within the I IB curriculum, or if you have achieved the IP IB diploma, we can waive um, the English proficiency requirement. And the same goes for um, if you have attended, uh, if you are taking AP courses or um, A-level Cambridge courses. 
And if you want to know, see more about our um, campus life with international students and all students, please connect with us on social media. Um, there's a variety on here, but um, if you want to see a lot of the activities that are happening on campus, um, join us on our TikTok. Um, this is completely run by um, international students, so it's a really fun um, page that they've created, and also um, a few of our Instagrams are completely student-run as well. And if you have any questions, please, you can connect with me, um, or you can connect with our general and international admissions um, email. So both are here. And then if you prefer WhatsApp, you can um, message me at this number as well. And these are the pathway program qualifications. Um, and if this is something that you are um, interested in and wanna know more about, please reach out to me and I can give you all these details um, and, and we can discuss it um, in, at a, um, more in depth. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Priya, for sharing uh, such important information with us and our audience today. So we do have our last presenter of the night, and we have from University of Nevada, um, Las Vegas, we have Laurie um, Filippo. So Laurie, this is your space right now. Perfect. Thank you so much. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, all right, can you see my slides okay? Okay, um, so again, my name is Lori Filippo. I'm the Assistant Director of Recruitment and Admissions for the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share some information about our undergrad as well as our graduate programs at UNLV. Um, so to start, I just wanna play a quick video that will allow you to get a chance to know us a little bit better. Desentrañando los misterios del cerebro, paso a paso y hasta el ADN, alcanzando la telepresencia, sincronizando los sentidos de un robot y un operador para salvar vidas en cualquier parte del planeta, y uniéndose a la misión de Marte de la NASA a dos millas del Strip de Las Vegas. Todos los días, UNLV hace un trabajo que mejora vidas en todo el mundo y aquí en casa. Somos pensadores, pero también hacedores. UNLV, Rebels, lo hacen posible. Okay. This is Sorry about that. Let's go to the next slide here. Okay. So UNLV is a worldwide destination. We are home to more than 30,000 students. Um, we have about 25,000 undergrads and 5,000 grad and professional students. We have students from all 50 states here in the US and from 85 different countries worldwide. Um, not only is UNLV a worldwide destination, but we offer a great location within the state of Nevada. So you'll see on the map just um, how close we are to other attractive destinations. We are within a drivable distance to Los Angeles, San Diego, and California, along with Phoenix, Arizona, and Salt Lake City in Utah. Um, so... We are part of an elite group here in the U.S. Um, we are only one of only 146 institutions nationwide um, to be classified with the highest status of R1 or very high research university. Uh, this is the gold standard among research-based institutions. We are also very proud of being ranked as the number one most diverse campus in the nation um, with 65% of our population representing different ethnic backgrounds. Um, a couple of our other rankings and classifications worth mentioning is the top 10 nationwide ranking for social mobility given by CollegeNet Social Mobility Index. Um, for those that do not know what social mobility is, um, it is the extent to which people are able to move between socioeconomic strata during their lifetime and between generations. We are also one of only 119 universities to receive a community engagement classification from the Gar Carnegie Foundation. Um, we, we have over 45 different research centers across campus. Um, we provide our students with the accessibility to um, truly have innovative research opportunities. 
We are a large size campus. So our average class size is usually 24 um, students with a faculty ratio of 19 to one. Um, international students are provided with the opportunities for curriculum practical training opportunities. Um, we have both part-time and full-time. Um, students also are held uh, internships and have been recruited by world-renowned companies um, that you'll see to the right. Um, we have um, over 80 majors and 68 minors. UNLV does offer more um, more than, um, it does offer other options. We provide opportunities. UNLV also has more than 175 graduate degree and certificate programs. We also have our own law, medicine, and dental medicine schools. Um, so we are proud that our academics draw upon the influences of our community and offer an education like nowhere else. Um, our most popular undergrad programs for international students are hospitality. Um, we do have the number one bachelor's degree in hospitality management from study.com in 2021, and we are ranked number two in hospitality and leisure management. Um, our other popular undergrad programs for international students are business, biology, kinesiology, psychology, and computer science. Okay. So for the admissions side with undergrad, um, for those who do not um, have not yet earned college credits outside of high school, um, we look for either 3.0 cumulative GPA or a um, 1120 on SAT or a 22 ACT composite score for admission. Um, applicants only need to meet one out of the three in order to be admitted. The ACT and SAT scores are not required for international students, but they are recommended to submit if you have them, um, as they can also be used as proof of your English proficiency. Um, there are no essays or recommendation letters required. Um, in addition to the criteria, full admission to UNLV for first year students or transfer who have not completed the English in the US requires English proficiency scores to be submitted. Um, we do have a bridge program. Um, so admission to the bridge pro program, you do not have to demonstrate English proficiency um, for transfer students or those who have earned college or university credits. Um, we look for a 2.5 cumulative GPA from all institutions attended. Okay, in order to meet the full admission requirements, English proficiency as mentioned must be demonstrated. So this can be done through submitting scores on the above exams that meet the minimum requirements or by attendance in an English speaking program at a high school or higher educational institution. Um, additionally, students are able to appeal these requirements if they are able to demonstrate proficiency in another way or if you by chance went um, are from a country where English is an official language. Um, the bridge is for students who are going to focus on ESL courses needed to order to meet UNLV's English proficiency exam. This program is credit bearing and an I-20 does get issued for this program. Um, you can qualify for an academic scholarship for those admitted to our bridge, bridge program. Um, it is up to 15% discount on the current tuition rates and an additional three to 5,000 on top of that discount. Um, we also have an intensive English program. It is non-credit bearing and is open to international, domestic, and transfer non-native speakers. Um, and I-20 can also be issued for this program. Um, as mentioned earlier, international students do have the ability to submit an alternate need form in order to be considered in the pool of admitted students for our international grants and scholarships. Students need to plan early um, and obtain admission prior to the priority deadline. Um, so you'll wanna keep in mind this is not the date in which the application needs to be submitted, but the date the student needs to have been admitted by. Um, in addition to being admitted on or prior um, to the priority deadline, students must also have an AF, ANF form on file um, or prior to the priority deadline as well. Um, the form becomes available every year on October 1st, and we do encourage submission, but just keep in mind that funding is limited. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and touch on the graduate admissions. 
So for graduate, um, UNLV does offer different opportunities to finance your studies. Um, we have over 5.7 million in scholarships and financial aid that are open to current and new students based on their annual application. About 76% of our UNLV students receive financial aid. We also offer more than 1,000 GA positions per year in different university departments. The GA are graduate assistants that are both working and students on campus. Um, it does require you working 20 hours a week. These positions are very competitive as they do offer a salary of between 11 to $20,000. Um, also, as a GA, you will get your out-of-state fees waived, so you'll be treated as an in-state student. Um, for the admission requirements, students must have a bachelor's degree from a regionally accredited institution or internationally equivalent with at least a 2.75 GPA. If you do not have a 2.75 GPA, we will look at the last 60 credits for at least a 3.0 GPA. You must submit copies of your transcripts from each post-secondary institution attended along with an English translation, if not in English, a foreign credential evaluation of your degree and coursework um, from outside the US may also be required depending on the program you wish to pursue. Um, and then of course, the proof of English proficiency is also required. To apply, you need to submit your application and required materials in the graduable gateway. When you choose your program, you can find um, all the documents and information directly in the gateway. Um, the application fee is uh, $95 for international students and all applications and required materials must be submitted by the deadline in order to be considered. Um, the general international deadlines are May 1st for fall terms, October 1st for the spring, and March 1st for the summer. So make sure to check the deadline page. However, some programs may have earlier deadlines. So if your program has an early deadline, you do have to go off that deadline. Um, some programs may also only admit once a year. So be aware of the deadline for your specific program to ensure you have the application completed and submitted by the deadline. Um, and with that, um, I am leaving our contact information. So if you have any questions for us for undergrad or grad, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll be happy to help. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Laurie, for your presentation. Um, we do have now um, the space for Q&A. So um, my coworker, Jackson, will be actually um, giving out the uh, questions that we have from our audience today. Thank you so much, Sharon, for uh, such a wonderful job on monitoring on Hispanic serving institutions. And we do have some questions from our chat box and I will go ahead and uh, direct them to them at this moment. So thank you again to all the participating universities that have been with us today um, celebrating um, you know, Hispanic Heritage Day. So we will go ahead and see, uh, we do have a general question for everyone. Are there graduate programs at any of these universities and are, um, what are some of the requirements? So we did have a, a briefing on some of the universities that um, uh, managed to provide uh, their uh, graduate program institutions. So I'm gonna write down my email address on, uh, on the chat box so that you guys can address it and I will forward the um, universities or participating universities email so that you guys can go ahead and uh, venture to their websites, okay? We do have a question that usually um, arises for, uh, for you guys and it's what is the age limit and if there is an age limit uh what will this be and if, if there's like a way to get around this age limit for admission so i'll open the floor for you guys to answer that uh this is magdaleno manzanares from western new mexico university we do not have age limit once when i was in the classroom i have a 16 year old and a 63 year old in the same class. And so no, no age limits, as long as they can prove that they can do the work. Thank you, Magdaleno. 
Anybody else would like to address that if there's a, an age limit to your institution? Yeah, this is John Yu from Shasta College. I, I always respond in the chat box. Uh, for us, if a student, if you're a high school graduate, graduate there'll be no, uh, no age limit. So we, yeah, we also have some uh, high school students, they actually taking concurrent enrollment. So what that mean is some high school students, are, they are current high school students, but they want to take some college classes. They are also enrolling in our uh, uh, class in, in our college as well. Thank you. Thank um, you, Sanjay. Yeah. yeah. But we do, but for us, uh, if a student, if they do not have a high school diploma, then they have to be 18 years or older. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody Thank else you. would like to comment on that? Uh, this is Jin Jin from University of Central Arkansas. We also don't have a, a age limit. I just want to share with everyone that as of last week, we just admitted a mother with her son together. So they both are attending our college now. Great. Thank you. All right. So the next question comes from Annabelle Gardner. Uh, and she would like to know, she wants to study an MBA, a master's or a master's degree to continue. Uh, and if she's wondering, what are some of the uh, opportunities that your institutions may have for an MBA? I know the, an MBA, uh, it's sometimes very competitive. So you guys want to stress uh, on the subject? This is Magdaleno Mazzonares from Western New Mexico University. Uh, we do have an MBA, and, and yes, there are some requirements in terms of the, the grades and all that, uh, the standard, so to speak. Uh, but we also have, as part of the MBA, you can do an MBA uh, in a face-to-face -face fashion, that is being in the classroom. But also we offer that as an online program. And sometimes depending on what program within the MBA you go, that could be a hybrid mode uh, where students may take, uh, say, one or two semesters online, and then they come here and we'll do the other two semesters in a face-to-face -face environment. That's also a way to save money because Students will save money on on travel, on uh, on, on uh, food and, and, and room. Uh, so, so we have that. We have flexibility in terms of uh, the offerings. Great, thank you, Magdalena, for uh, for your briefing us on uh, an MBA, the MBA program. I have. A I have a, a question that is also here on the uh, chat box, which uh, on Facebook, uh, which is, um, just hold on a minute, let me find it. Are there any forms of waivers when it comes to the application fee? Um, do, you guys do you guys have any waivers? Well, it seems I am more applies in this one, Jackson, but <laughs> yeah. this is Magdaleno Manzanares from Western New Mexico University. Our um, international office, uh, most likely than not, it, it, it waives the application fees. And uh, there are some exceptions, but very rarely. So I will dare to say that uh, we can waive it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this, this John, uh, we actually, we were, uh, so right now, uh, our governing board have decided to waiver uh, all the application fee for international student for next year, for the next year, yeah. So we have, if you apply for Shasta College right now, you don't have to uh, pay application fee. So we do, so in short, we do provide uh, application fee waiver. Thank you. Thank you. 
uh, from Xinjiang from uh, Central Arkansas, yes, we do have an uh, application fee, fee waiver. Usually, you know, it's an Education USA advisor. They would recommend some students to us or the students contact us directly to, you know, uh, show their uh, qualifications. So we do provide application fee waiver. Thank you. All right, uh, this, we have come to the end of our showcase panel on Hispanic serving institutions. And I wanna give a um, warm thank you to all of you guys that have uh, been with us for two hours presenting on your institutions, the uh, different programs, opportunities of scholarships and admission requirements and everything that pertains to the great job that all of you do when it comes to admitting our international community. So uh, Sharon, thank you for such a wonderful job and uh, being the host uh, for this event and also to our participants on Facebook. Thank you again and uh, reach out to us. I have placed uh, our emails on the chat box so that you guys can reach out to us. Remember that Education USA is a Department of State network and all of our services are completely free. So feel uh, free to uh, reach out and we will we'll be more than happy to help you guys uh, when it comes to the admission process to any of the 4,700 universities that are accredited in the United States. You can also see that on the chat box, our participants are placing their email addresses so that you guys can write directly to them and um, ask them your questions. So thank you again for uh, being with us and it has been a pleasure. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.